for, uh, you know, reading over social media, came across an article in the New York Times. And uh, the article basically was telling you how to deal with customers that are racist or neighbors that are racist. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like a how to uh, uh, how to avoid racism for dummies. Um, and I understand what time we are in our history. I think that there are a lot of people, and I won't say that everybody who voted for Donald Trump is, is racist. I wouldn't say it at all. But I think that there has been a spirit that has been awakened with his election. Yes. And I think it's part that he stoked and part uh, that just people felt a connection to. Like when you have people from white supremacist groups uh, and people from uh, neo-Nazi groups responding to you, and you have people that are you know saying that you're going to champion that cause and that you're going to bring the right man back to prominence, you have to take a look and see what you've done. Now, my uh, reaction has been to respond in kind. I've been uh, you know one. I'm, when people say turn the other cheek, that obviously is not how I feel about a lot of things. But I recognize it's important. There have to be people who are better, who rise above the fray. There have to be people who, 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 who turn the other cheek. They have to be people who forgive over and over and over again. And I think those people will make the world a better place. I think that I really, other than, than hatred and hatred and victory, uh, I, I, I reject the, the notion that, oh, well, you keep this thing going because you, you respond in kind. I think that me seeing a thing and responding to it um, uh, doesn't keep it going. I think it illuminates it, but I still think it has a negative effect. I think that we need people who are hopeful. I think that we need people who who who, who see the good in their fellow man. I'm not one of them. I'm not. I think that I, that I just I, I recognize what I am. I think that when they did what they did to 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 me, which was so disrespectful to the Obamas and so disrespectful to his agenda, I respond in kind. When you talked about Sasha and Malia, to me, Barron is not off limits. That doesn't make it right. That makes it is. When you talk about Michelle Obama, I'm gonna say something about uh, Boris, uh, Boris and Natasha, or, or or whatever her name is, the male or the bride chick. I, that's how I am. But if it's how I am, like what what did, what did Gandhi say? Uh, uh, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. I mean, he hated niggas too. But I'm just saying, basically, that we do need people who see the good in people. We need people who are better. We need people who are aspirational. We need people who who, who say, I'm going to be the change that makes the world a better place. We need them. I think that it's okay to be used. I think that it's okay to be, uh, you know, a conduit. Like, all of us are used. Some of us are used for our talents, our looks, our money. All of us are used. It's just never okay to be misused. And I think uh, that the world would be a lot better if, if we didn't have to have articles in the New York Times telling us how to deal with people who are going to say things. Like, how to hate niggas for dummies. And, and I think that we've, I know that I don't make this conversation <laughs> any better. So I'm just, what I'm basically saying is somebody out there better than us, y'all pray. <laughs> I'm going to talk shit. <laughs> All right, that's a little note from the GED section that's coming up. Uh, wait, that's a little note from the GED section. The Jazz Report is coming up right after Mary J. Blige. It's the D.L. Hughley Show. Hey, you, you, make sure you follow at all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL.